Welcome, I'm John Glanville, and this is video number one in the Calmness in Mind process. Now, throughout my younger life, I struggled hugely with shyness, anxiety, painful self-consciousness, OCD, and a numbing depression. Despite this, after my teens, I learned how to function reasonably well. I had good jobs, and often people saw me as calm, confident, and competent. And mostly, I could function well, despite how my emotions either overwhelmed me or underwhelmed me on the inside. I learned to cover up how I felt, or I found strategies to control situations so my thoughts and my feelings were kept in check. I have to be honest, it was exhausting. And although I did great things, nothing really felt enjoyable. Now that was 20 years ago, and now I'm happy to report that I have none of these conditions. I genuinely am very calm, peaceful and very happy. However, who I am these days is just so far removed from who I was back then. So I absolutely know that change is possible. Was it easy? No. Was it worth it? Oh my God, yes. So I'm going to teach you everything I learned as I completely renewed all aspects of myself. And what I discovered was both simple and complex at the same time. The fact that you can reprogram your mind. You can change the chemistry in your physiology. And you can change your identity. You can keep the bits you like if they serve you well. Uh, and you can add new facets uh, that can enhance your own experience of being yourself even further. Now, please trust the knowledge that I acquired from 20 years of study and 17,000 hours delivering therapy to anxious professionals and trust my inexplicable brain, which can see patterns in information, and it can join the dots in information to reveal perspectives that so many people miss. And probably the most surprising discovery was just how many regular and high-functioning people experience anxiety and depression. Usually they were intelligent, they tended to have complex personalities, they were overthinkers, often they were creative, and they cared what people thought of them. It seems to me as well that often they were quite controlling, even if they weren't directly aware of that in their nature. It was almost as if anxiety was the natural condition that emerged within this type of individual through thinking and worrying too much. Therefore, if we're going to rid ourselves of fear or depression, it means we have to think and worry differently. And to do this, we need to see ourselves in a new light and we need to observe the world in new ways. Now you're going to hear me say this again and again. It's not possible to think your way out of anxiety. Because anxiety is the symptom of thinking and worrying too much. So I'm going to be teaching you many ways to quieten your mind or to at least change the old stories that have been running for so many years. Now my style of working is very metaphorical. Everything I teach you is not necessarily the truth, but it points to the truth. I'll use metaphors and stories whereby your mind can go, ah, yeah, yeah, I can, I can see what he's trying to say here. Let me give you an example. It's true that I can drive my car, but the truth is I don't really know how I actually drive my car. My feet and my hands just do it automatically. I just respond to events as they happen, and mostly I'm just looking out the window. Allow me to exaggerate, allow me to embellish, allow me to contradict myself, to show you how the mind works and to prove to you how simplistic and how flawed our minds actually are. Also, to demonstrate to you that who we are is really not very logical at all. Life does contradict itself. You can both love and hate a person at the same time. Your body can be hot while your hands are cold. You may be angry with a person yet agree that they did the right thing. You, know? you can have many different perspectives on the same issue. Let me give you an example. Let's say a lawyer may be asked to represent an organization whose values they disagree with, and yet they do it just to keep their job. Whilst at the same time, they're retraining because they dislike their job, but they need the money the post provides until their retraining is finished. So many contradictions in our world. So many other things in life don't make sense either. Love. Love's not rational or logical. Music, poetry, art. These are things that we just enjoy. And on different days we may enjoy them differently. Just think about depression. 
OCD, anxiety, they're all completely contradictory. I feel low, so I can't be bothered to exercise, even though I know exercise will chemically lift my mood. That's a huge contradiction. I know it's stupid to not trust that the door is locked when I've already checked it five times, so I'll just check it another five times. It's contradictory. I know my mind can't really predict the future, yet my brain is telling me that if I don't act in a certain way, she'll get angry. These are just stories and contradictions and things that happen in your mind. So the real key to gaining emotional control is to really understand how your brain and your body really work so that you can retrain them, so that you can interrupt all the old patterns. Now, as I produce more and more videos, three distinct stages will begin to emerge. Firstly, I'll be teaching you what you're actually dealing with, what anxiety, what depression, what OCD, what they genuinely are. I'm going to be teaching you how emotions work, I'm going to be showing you how thoughts work, and we're going to go into a lot of detail. Then I'm going to teach you how to interrupt unwanted thoughts, how to interrupt unwanted feelings, how to manage fear, how to find more calmness, and importantly, how to begin starting making decisions again. Then thirdly, and probably the most importantly, will be how to engage with life in new ways, how to see yourself differently, how to recognize and update your own values and beliefs. Um, now to keep our sort of communication simple, I'm going to classify a few terms, so we're on the same page. By anxiety, I mean unwanted, fearful emotions and thoughts that overwhelm you and stress you. In fact, I'll be arguing that what you may be having is the right emotion, but at the wrong time and the wrong intensity. If you were standing on the edge of a cliff, those emotions would be okay. But if you have them whilst you're in the grocery store, well, they're not. By OCD, I mean habits that you feel compelled to perform, thoughts or mental routines that need to be carried out in your mind, and for some, um, horrible intrusive thoughts that cause you to really fear what you may do or what you may have done. By depression, I mean a lack of energy, a lack of motivation and desire to engage with life, a, a lack of goals, a numbness that makes you feel stuck, lost and alone. By conscious, I mean thoughts or ideas that you seemingly can control. And by subconscious, I'm referring to thoughts, ideas and behaviours that just sort of involuntarily happen or just come up in, out of your mind. Now, some people relate to the subconscious as the unconscious. Allow me to jump between them. Subconscious, unconscious, they're the same thing. And remember this. The whole process is about letting go of perceived control. The whole process is about letting go of pedantic behaviours. And the whole process is about letting go of the feeling that you have to be right. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Well, this process is all about being happy. And therefore, from this perspective, being right takes on a whole new meaning. What thoughts or actions in this moment are the right ones for my happiness? Now, I'd recommend that you watch each video repeatedly, because even though you may understand intellectually what I'm describing, it doesn't mean your unconscious knows what I'm talking about. And it may be that your subconscious mind needs to be exposed to the information frequently before it actually takes it in. And after this free introduction, I'm aiming for each of my educational videos to be between 20 and 30 minutes long, and I'm going to delve deeply into the details to show you how you can change yourself on so many levels. Now this flies in the face of this YouTube fast consumption world where people's attention span is only three minutes long. And I believe this is one of the reasons that anxiety is so prevalent uh, amongst us. We look for quick solutions. We almost have an overload of partial information rather than spending the time to gain a deep understanding of how we really work and how we really function. Also, by taking 30 minutes to really concentrate on your own emotional well-being, it's such a profound statement to yourself. So, as the videos come along, watch the videos, watch all of the video, watch parts of it. Keep coming back to it, keep re-watching it over and over, because repetition is critical. And let me tell you why. Just because your conscious understands a concept does not mean that your unconscious understands it or has even seen the idea. 
Your conscious and your subconscious are on two completely separate systems. All of our anxiety, phobias, addictions, and bad behaviors, these are hardwired subconsciously. They just happen. They just fire off. You know? Regardless of what we're consciously thinking or knowing, bang, they just fire off. You consciously know sugar is bad for you. You knowingly accept you're on a diet. And yet there you are with your nose in the fridge. Therefore, to consciously know something is almost irrelevant. But to rewire the subconscious, that's everything. And I think this is why smart thinkers get anxiety and OCD. It's because they're caught up in the details of the software. Rather than spending time updating the processes of the operating system that lays beneath. So the way we rewire the subconscious mind is to disregard the conscious mind and all its logical gatekeeping thoughts. Thoughts like, well, you already know this, or well, this is boring, or what's this got to do with anxiety, or this video is too long, etc. We need to get behind that trap and retrain our subconscious through repetition, multi-sense activation, deceptive imagery, and a raft of sneaky psychological tools to get the job done. It's what marketing people have been doing with you with TV commercials for years. Repetition, imagery, and emotional anchoring. These are vital in reprogramming your subconscious mind, even if your conscious mind thinks it knows everything. Now, for some people who've done a lot of self-reflection, many of my concepts may be familiar. However, I would earnestly ask you to still pay attention because I'll be bringing in many subtle twists and perspectives which really may surprise you. Apply yourself, keep an open mind, and allow me to show you a new way through. In the next video, we're going to start digging deeper into understanding anxiety and OCD and figuring out what they really are as we begin the journey of retraining your brain and your body for more calmness. And remember, the more people who support me through Patreon means the faster I am able to produce more videos so I can help loads of people at a really low cost. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.